Hey guys. How are all of you beautiful people doing? I hope you all are having a great day. And yes this is a new Sire's Naruto Shiner B system. Where the world that once seemed fictional is now real. Shiner B, Chakra. It's all so close. After being reborn in the body of a deceased child, the hero has a second chance to live this life anew. Having found a new home and clan, he will have a long and difficult journey. But the object that was found in the past and changed his fate is still with him. Now, with this power, he will follow the path of the strongest Shiner Bee. So let without any delay let's start the series. Night. A quiet breeze gently touched the grass, gently pressing it to the ground. The birds had long since fallen asleep, and the chirping of the crickets resounded in the dark silence. An ordinary quiet night, this ordinary day. But this calm was too strange, too oppressive. On the outskirts of the city, there was a large mansion, in one of the windows of which a bright light was still burning. The house was surrounded by a high fence, within the walls of which there were many people scurrying back and forth. Each of them had frowns and tense faces. They were all heavily armed and wore the same black suits. The house itself looked like an impregnable fortress. There were bags, barrels and multiple barriers on the ground. The entire perimeter, around the house, was in trenches and barricades as if people inside were preparing for an attack. On the top floor, in the study, where the light was still on, there was only one person. It was a white-haired man with light stubble in a white shirt and black trousers. His legs were draped over the table, and he himself was rather relaxed. A cigarette was smoking in his teeth, the ashes of which were about to fall. In his hands he was holding a small book with a rather colorful cover, on which several orange letters were clearly written, Naruto. The man calmly read the manga, sometimes turning the pages, with a characteristic rustling sound. The room was quiet and in perfect order. Against the wall, there were several closets filled with manga and books, a large bar with alcohol and a couple of paintings. There was a small table by the window, with neatly folded papers and a dimly burning lamp. Nearby, there was a large plasma TV and a computer. But the silence of this place was suddenly broken by a loud and distinct pistol shot. The guard at the gate fell dead, and then another series of shots was heard. Asterisk bang bar bang asterisk. Several more guards were killed by an automatic burst. A batch of sniper shots took a couple more people off the rooftops. As soon as the shots stopped, several dozen armed men began to leave the houses in the neighborhood. At the same instant, a huge truck rammed the steel gate at high speed, completely destroying it. But no sooner had the truck passed a meter than the driver was immediately shot from a gun. Asterisk boom asterisk. A car without a driver crashed into one of the barricades. But even if the driver was dead, the attackers achieved what they wanted. The guards who had already raised the alarm did not panic, they quickly began to prepare and take up their positions. It was as if this was in the order of things for them. After transmitting a signal over the radio, everyone moved strictly according to the plan. The whole house was immediately lit. A multitude of searchlights were directed towards the streets, blinding the attackers. At the top of the house, several windows opened, from where several sniper rifles looked out. On them, from a neighboring roof, fire immediately opened, but to no avail. Bullets that hit the windows immediately bounced off. The windows, like the doors, were armored. The snipers in the house were not stupid and did not open completely, pulling out only the muzzle of their weapon. In response to the shots, the snipers opened fire. At the same moment, a lot of people rushed into the gap formed by the truck, like an avalanche. 
Each carried a different weapon and was dressed distinctively. Many of the attackers had a bunch of tattoos, and some wore simple black suits. These people definitely belonged to different factions. A firefight ensued, and many of the attackers were killed. But at that moment, several smoke grenades were thrown from the back of the truck. Thick grey smoke filled the entire area, blocking the view of the house's guards. But they remained calm, taking out of their pocket a strange-looking mask, they quickly put them on their faces, after which they began to transmit something on the radio. As soon as this happened, the upper window was opened, after which several objects, shaped like smoke grenades, flew out from there. But it was not them at all. Cries were heard in the smoke. Put on masks quickly. Faster than idiots. At the same moment, the grenade landed on the ground, from which thick yellow smoke spread in all directions. Fuck. More often, assholes. Gara. There was a cough, but then shots rang out. From windows and barricades, house guards began to fire. At the same time, several people ran out of the smoke, taking up a position behind the truck. All these people were wearing masks, which greatly surprised the guards. How did they know? One of the defenders shouted furiously. Never mind. Keep the defense. A skirmish ensued. One by one, people fell dead. Both sides suffered heavy casualties. Using the smoke as cover, the attackers quickly pushed the defenders back and took up strong positions. At the same time, when people shed blood and died one after another. On the top floor of the mansion, the man reading the manga finally closed it and put out his cigarette, and then immediately lit another one. Asterisk PFF asterisk. Breathing out the smoke. He chuckled. Damn, how noisy they are, getting up, the man went to the window and looked at the heavy firefight with a cold face. The guardians of the house died one after another, but continued to stubbornly defend themselves. As expected, the syndicate also joined. Looking at the attackers, the man grinned wryly. They even took the masks. Nevertheless, he decided to continue leaking information about us. Although, the gas was just a temporary measure. We can't stand it anyway. Asterisk knock knock, asterisk. At that moment there was a loud knock on the door, after which a tall, dark-skinned man rushed into the room. His height was more than two meters, and he was about the width of a wardrobe, a real giant. The man wore the same tuxedo as all the guards. Entering the office, he wiped his sweaty forehead and said nervously. Boss. Everything is worse than we thought, the syndicate is with them, and the eastern factions too. We wouldn't have held out so, but now. I'm afraid we won't last an hour. Plus, they seem to know a lot about us. Standing at the window, the man waved his hand. It doesn't matter, I can see it without you exhaling smoke, the blonde turned around, and then walked a few meters and stood in front of the tall guard. Noticing his boss strange look, the guard flinched slightly. He immediately sensed that something was wrong here, so he asked. Sir. Something is wrong. The man ignored his question and asked with a grin. Jay, you better tell me what. Why did you turn us in? From such an unexpected question, the man abruptly took a step back and on instinct tried to grab the pistol, but was immediately stopped. The blonde opposite was much faster. Asterisk sha. Asterisk. A sharp knife instantly cut through the air and plunged into the guard's neck. K-H-H-H. Reflexively, Jay raised his hands to his neck, but there was too little blood flowing out. The knife pierced the throat, from which all the blood poured inward, making it choke.
the guard fell to his knees in horror and with trembling hands tore the sharp blade from his throat. Throwing it aside, he immediately began to spray a dark red liquid all over the carpet. Looking at the dying man in disappointment, the blonde only exhaled smoke and sighed. Don't worry, I'm not offended. Anyway, we would die today. Betray me or not, but this is the last day of the organization. Really? Glancing with a sneer at the already pale guy, the blonde grinned. You will die much earlier, like everyone with whom you are connected. Hearing the man's words, Jay looked up in horror and held out his hand, trying to grab something. But the blonde just squatted down and said. You know what I do with Jay's traitors. So you can only blame yourself. If you thought to stab me in the back today, then I have to disappoint you, I have known about your affairs for a long time. Although you and I will not see it, all who betrayed me will pay in blood, and all those who arrived today for the artifact will pay in full. Even if I have to die, it's up to me how it happens. Well, and you? Looking at the fading gaze of the god, the blonde threw a cigarette into his body and coldly said. You will die like a traitorous mongrel, choking on your own blood. Glancing at the rack full of his favorite manga, the blonde smiled. Even without techniques and different jutsu, I have lived a rich life. There is no decent death, but... I will definitely die brilliantly. Walking over to the bar with drinks, the man drained a glass of bourbon and, lighting another cigarette, took out a small box. Opening it with a smile, he grinned recklessly. It was a small, unremarkable red button. But even though it looked so simple, in fact, one click on it and it will take hundreds of lives. Without taking his eyes off the small button, the man muttered with a smile. Art is an explosion, right? Ha ha, then let's turn death into art. Approaching the table, the blonde picked up the recently read manga. Flipping a few pages at last, he stopped at the last. There, at the very end, was a strange object. It was a white disc, with many red, glowing symbols inscribed on it. He looked definitely unusual, as if he was not from this world. Picking up the artifact, the man touched several symbols with a smile. It's a pity that I could not solve your secret. With a wry smile, the guy put the disc into his pocket and started flipping through the manga again. Seeing several familiar battles, the man smiled and walked to the window. The shootout continued, very soon the enemies would break into the house, and then it would be difficult to control your fate. In his relatively short life, having experienced grief and sadness, as well as joys and pleasures, he did not regret anything. Now, he was fully prepared to complete his journey. With a grin, glancing at the life-full eyes of the attackers, the blonde ran his finger along the red button and snarled, grinning. Cats. A bright flash was the last thing he saw before leaving this world. Sean Myers, just a name that won't matter anymore, just a nickname, an ordinary shell. The death of this man claimed hundreds of lives. Even after dying, deaths because of him did not stop. All his followers continued to take revenge, staging a massacre, killing no fewer people than died in that tragedy, in that terrible explosion. But now, it didn't matter anymore. Although his death brought so much pain and death, his birth was the most common. A simple child born on a quiet winter night. Shortly after his birth, Sean lost his mother. His father was in prison at that time, so the child ended up in an orphanage and was brought up there until he was ten. After the return of his father, the boy found a family for the first time. Although Sean's father was a criminal, he never hurt his son. Moreover, he taught him a lot including his main craft, theft. 
five years at large, and after that he again thundered behind bars. Yet this thief lacked self-control and careful preparation, which he himself noticed more than once. For his father's next term, Sean could only shake his head with a smile. His father, both free and behind bars, was always like a fish in water and had a positive attitude towards life. Although, his father definitely lacked responsibility, which made Sean grow up early. But he never blamed him for that. Life in the orphanage was not sugar, so he had already learned to adapt and survive there. This helped him quickly wedge himself into the life of the slums and criminal-filled streets. What was really the main thing among the robbers and bandits? Many things, but the main thing is confidence and strength. At least, people from his past thought so. One does not work without the other. If you are weak, but too confident, then you are just an idiot who will probably die quickly or find out his true place in life. Just being strong isn't an option either. However strong you are, if you lack confidence, you will quickly be overwhelmed. That is why, strength without confidence is completely useless. Your confidence will allow you to influence others and gain their strength, from which you will become strong yourself. But, of course, such people will never listen to a simple confident idiot, you cannot build authority that way. First, you need to show your own strength. Who wants to obey a weakling? If you are confident and physically strong, then in principle you can find your place. There is simply a possibility that your life will be short-lived. After all, these two qualities are not the most important. People who think so do not live long. Reason is also one of the most important things in survival in such a place. But only the weak need survival. The strong need life. Without intelligence and the ability to use it, it is very difficult to escape from this world. Wherever you are, if you are not particularly smart, then your life will not be easy. Although, it happens quite the opposite. But, Sean had enough strength, and confidence, and intelligence. So he was able to gain credibility very quickly and form the first little gang. Everyone knows what gangs do. Gangs commit crimes, and Sean's gang has committed minor ones. He did not want to follow in the footsteps of his father and fall for various stupid things. Pickpocketing was really a lucrative business, especially if you thought it over, chose the right places, and taught others the skill of pickpocketing. Yet this is not given to everyone from birth, and some are generally incapable of it. But time passed and there were more and more experienced pickpockets under his command. That ended up bringing profit, but also enemies. It all turned into fighting and killing. Then Sean killed a man for the first time, and after that a large road of corpses was paved to his next place in life. The head of a large and strong group. Now pickpocketing was no longer enough. Most of the areas of the criminal business were covered by him, and money flowed like a river. It was at that moment that Sean's father died. It wasn't some kind of vengeful murder, or anything like that. No, this was the most common suicide. After leaving prison, the guy's father was already too old to steal and simply decided to quietly leave the world. The death of his father crippled Sean a little, but he respected his decision. After that, he thought about many things in life. About the uselessness of wealth and useless items that have no value. It was then that he began to look for his own path in life. This led to the fact that he stopped paying particular attention to the organization he built, about the enemies plotting against him. Fully devoting himself to one thing, he stopped noticing everything else and behaved too confidently. Of course he understood all this, but did not worry at all. 
he was no longer worried about all these mediocre matters. He spent all his wealth in search of interesting things in the world, something really valuable, something that would make sense. Studying the world and making searches, he found a lot. But these were not only artifacts and relics, they were also interesting activities and hobbies that helped to dispel boredom. The main thing was, of course, the manga. It turned out to be quite addictive reading. Reading manga has become perhaps one of his few favorite things, along with alcohol and constant smoking. If not for that day, he would definitely have died from one of these habits. Over the years of searching, many interesting artifacts have been found. Most of them ended up with the same rubbish, which he threw away without hesitation. Those who picked up this trash were simply bewildered by Sean's actions. The most valuable artifacts of the past were of no value to him. Artifacts worth billions were no better for him than garbage. But it didn't matter to him. A piece of stone, even if it's a million years old, is still a piece of stone. One day, in another search, Sean finally found something really worthwhile. Something that completely changed his whole life. The find that led to his death. Alien technology, an artifact of ancient ancestors, an extraterrestrial micro-circuit. This item has been given many names, but it is not known which was truly correct. The only thing that was known about this item is that it was definitely not earthly. Even the substance from which it was created was unknowable. Small disc, palm-sized, perfectly shaped. He was all white, except for the special glowing symbols. These symbols were definitely special, emitting a strange, bright red glow. But the glow was not really interesting, but the symbols themselves, from which this glow emanated. These symbols were arranged in a certain order and formed a kind of scheme. All the symbols were connected and represented a common pattern that differed on different sides of the disc. What Sean immediately noticed was that the characters for the beat were quite similar to the Fuinjutsu from his favorite manga. Of course, there were obvious differences, but these symbols were much more similar to them than to some kind of earthly code. After finding this artifact, Sean began to study it carefully, not caring about any means. He was looking for the best scientists in the world and tried with their help to learn more and understand the secret of this subject. But, unfortunately, everything was hopeless. Scientists simply could not give any answer, they could not even determine the age of the artifact, which was simply incredible. This object did not succumb to any radiation, any external influence. No fire, no laser, nothing could even scratch him. All the symbols on it continued to glow, not paying attention to anything at all, as probably before, for many thousands of years. But although the artifact might seem useless, Sean did not give up and began to learn himself. Of course. Science was definitely not his calling. Having lived most of his life among bandits and thieves, science was a difficult thing for him. In the past, his life was filled with money, women, alcohol, he could not even think that one day he would begin to learn different languages. But, of course, these were not ordinary languages. There was little use in them. What was written on the disc was a kind of formula, Sean knew for sure. The only thing that somehow looked like this was programming and electronics. Of course, no symbols were used in electronics at all, only special details. But in fact, it made sense. Many symbols in Fuinjutsu served their purpose, just like parts in electronics. But wanting to learn something is one thing but doing it is quite another. Although Sean had studied a lot, the exact sciences for him were many times more difficult than drawing up a plan of theft or murder. 
Even after spending two years, he didn't come up with anything special. Although knowledge was acquired, it was impossible to apply it to the artifact. Of course, he was not surprised by this result. If even the great scientists could not find anything, how can he? All this time, which he spent on studying, in the group he built, a real mess was going on. Loyal followers, of course, tried to keep everything in order, but there were also many dissatisfied. If the leader is weak, then a new leader is needed, and in this case, the past leader can suffer greatly, as well as his entourage. And so it happened, one day some members of the organization revolted. With the support of several other gangs, they were able to take the lead. At the same time, Sean was not worried about anything, as always studied the artifact. When he received the news, he was furious. He may have retired, but he was still the leader of the group, and some behind-the-scenes dogs staged a coup. His enemies did not know, but a few years ago, several Western gangs had already recognized themselves as vassals of Sean, so they took part in the upcoming war of groups. Any battle of factions leads to numerous deaths, this was no exception. Unfortunately, it turned out to be much worse than just a coup. It turned out that many gangs have united for several purposes. But one of the main ones was a strange artifact in the hands of Sean. There were many people in the world who could pay well for such an item. Actually, this is how it all came to be that he hired more than a hundred mercenaries and made them guard one of his mansions. He already knew about the traitors in advance, knew about his own death in advance. Therefore, he calmly gave orders to all the remaining loyal people, to eliminate all threats from the group, after the mass death of its enemies. Of course, the grouping itself did not bother him much, he simply did not want his enemies to triumph and destroy the organization that he had been building for years. After all, bombs were planted, not only along the perimeter of the mansion, but also in many enemy enterprises and bases. Just one explosion and hundreds of people will die, just one explosion and most of Sean's enemies will go to the next world. Well, the survivors will be killed by the remaining people. And so, the plan came to fruition and took hundreds of lives with it. Leaving this world, Sean left a terrifying organization that took root on the bones of hundreds of corpses. But, all this is no longer important, he decided his death himself, but he did not leave this world alone. Countless glowing lights floated in the boundless black space. They were all different colors and sizes, even their speed of movement was different. The smallest moved faster than the others while the largest floated carefree in the same direction as the rest. This place had many names and meanings. But no matter how it was called, its purpose did not change. It was one big filter of soul energy, the astral plane. All souls, getting here, go on a last journey, at the end of which, all their energy will be transformed and purified. Then, the energy will dissipate around the world again, creating new souls. But the astral was a unique place, not everyone could get here, only a creature with destiny is capable of it. Those souls, whose fate is not enough, simply scatter in the world. But those who got into the astral plane cannot be called special. After all, in the end, they will still be completely erased. Those who still go deep into the astral at the end of their path still have the opportunity for a second chance. But who will give it to them? There are too few creatures in the world that are capable of such a thing, and even if such a creature arrives here, what is the point in pulling miserable souls out of such a place and wasting his strength? To pull out even the weakest of them, these godlike creatures will have to sacrifice much which they certainly will not sacrifice. So someone who never gets to this place or, 
by an incredible coincidence of circumstances, can break out of the eternal cycle can be called special here. Which, of course, is almost impossible. There was no other way to leave this place, at least until now. Among the billions of lights of different colors, floated like everything, a rather slow glowing gray ball. He was larger than many other lights, but also smaller than many. But even though he looked simple, among everyone here, he had something unique. Deep inside, its gray, a luminous shell, a white disc was quietly spinning, with many bright red, glowing symbols. While the endless lights floated in the astral, this white disc kept rotating and rotating, gradually accelerating. At first it was just a slow motion and a faint red glow. But after a moment, it was spinning at an incredible speed, from which it was difficult to distinguish the characters written on it. At some point, there was only one bright red glow, which seemed to pulsate and illuminate from within a grey, dimly burning sphere moving deeper into the astral. But the disc did not slow down, and the red glow continued to grow. At some point, it became so strong that it began to merge with the dull grey. Forming a dark red, but already brighter ball. The disc, whose movement could no longer be stopped, began to slowly dissolve and merge with the grey sphere, completely becoming a part of it. Ultimately, among the innumerable glowing lights, one changed, acquiring a different colour and a brighter glow. Then, the ball began to accelerate, and its glow slowly intensified and continued to slowly pulsate. He continued to gain speed and at some point, he moved faster than any of all the lights on the way. It seemed that he was already close to the end, close to completely disappearing from the world. But at some point, its speed increased so much that the space in its path burst and the glowing dark ball immediately burst into the open gap. A moment, and he disappeared, after which the open black funnel immediately disappeared. Thus, the astral plane returned to its normal state again. All these little movements, taking place a few seconds ago, as if they did not exist. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Where I am? What's happening? Moving along the road of the astral plane, Sean woke up for a moment. Usually, souls traveling towards the end of their journey are unable to sense anything. When beings with strong destinies die, their souls fall into a long sleep, until the end of time. Until the times, until they completely disappear. But Sean's situation was slightly different. The strange object that followed him into the astral plane began to move. As soon as it happened, just for a moment, but Sean woke up. Complete merging with the master's soul is complete. Definition of World Laws Hearing strange words, Sean, still in a strange state, did not even understand what was happening. After all, he simply did not feel himself, he could not understand anything at all. But before he had time to remember himself, he again plunged into a long sleep. Asterisk 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 Going beyond the limits of the astral plane into incomprehensible darkness, the soul stopped for a moment. Its glow noticeably weakened, but after a moment, the soul ball suddenly flashed red. Then it began to fade again, but while this was happening, a rift appeared in the black unknown space. Immediately not a second, the ball of the soul penetrated into the opening gap, quickly dimming and losing its glow. Coming out of the darkness through the rift, the ball of the soul fell into another space. It was a seemingly ordinary world. Vast forests, deep blue skies and many stars. It was late night and the moon was shining brightly on the earth. The soul ball was dimming faster and faster. He seemed to have spent all his strength and gradually faded away. But this path was definitely not in vain. With a slight flinch, the soul ball instantly moved. 
moving so fast, it not only dimmed, but also diminished in size. He threw all his strength into this last spurt. The place where the balloon was heading was surrounded by forests. It was a fairly large village, with many houses and buildings. Not far from this village, there was a large rock with four men's faces carved into it. Having accelerated, the soul ball flew several kilometers in a couple of seconds. He seemed to know where to go and, without slowing down, he was heading to the right place. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. At the same time, in the hidden leaf village, in the village hospital. Several people were in the spacious hall, illuminated by bright light. There were four of them in total. The three wore the same white clothes with the same caps. They had the same symbol on their chests denoting their identity as a medical ninja. All of them surrounded the little dark-haired boy and tried to revive him. In appearance, the child was not injured, he was just slightly pale. It was difficult to understand what was going on. Just an hour ago, this boy was quite healthy, but then he suddenly passed out. When the baby was brought to the hospital, doctors began providing emergency care. The baby's pulse was weakening and his heart rate was rapidly slowing down. Experienced ninja medics did not understand what was happening, they had never encountered such a thing. The child simply started dying for no reason, all they could do now was try to maintain his condition. Several monitors displayed disappointing data about the boy's condition. The cardiograph made a sound less and less. At some point, a rare squeaking sound turned into a constant. Ten minutes later, the eldest of those present removed his hands from the boy's chest. Wiping the sweat from his forehead, he sighed. Enough, he died. He's been dead for almost a minute. The doctors looked at each other and sighed sadly. They have already seen children die dozens of times especially in World War III. But this time was different. Not only was there no more war, but the death of this child was completely incomprehensible to them. The old man took off his cap and sighed. The first child of Shikazu died in a similar way. What? A new son, is this not the first time? The young girl asked in surprise. Starkey nodded. Um, Shikaku was not the first child, his younger brother died the same way. We just couldn't do anything. I guess it's something genetic, and maybe some kind of curse. Hearing the words of their elder, the two assistants only sighed sadly. The death of a child, and even such a small one, is always sad. Remembering Shikaku's frightened look, the old man could only clench his fists and look with shame at the pale child. Once he himself lost his son, he understood this pain well. Noticing the condition of her elder, the young girl approached the old man and asked worriedly. A new son, maybe I can tell them. Yet we are from the same clan. A new shook his head. No need, I am not here the first day, you better do your work and I can somehow cope. Putting on his cap again, the man turned around and walked towards the exit from the intensive care unit. But it was at this moment that the unexpected happened. A completely imperceptible little red ball flashed with a bright light and plunged into the chest of the deceased child. As soon as it happened. Before that, the heart, already unbeating for several minutes, suddenly revived. Slowly, but the whole body began to function, even the pallor of the skin began to subside. The doctors did not even notice what had happened, and the doctor, who had already come close to the exit, suddenly stopped. The quiet squeak of the cardiograph suddenly changed. Horror! It was at this moment that the child, who was sleeping in a dead sleep, jumped up abruptly and breathing heavily, began to look around in horror. 
The boy was stripped to the waist, and there were several Fuian seals and electrodes on his chest. In his right hand was a catheter through which a clear liquid entered his body. He was a very ordinary child, with slightly long black hair in a ponytail. As soon as he jumped up, the doctors fell into a stupor. Even the old man, who had seen a lot in life, took a few seconds to recover. Just dead, whose heart did not beat for several minutes, suddenly woke up, for him this was a shock. The guy looked scared, but quickly pulled himself together. Seeing people around him and his little hands, he did not try to escape. All he did was try to understand everything. His mind was still slightly unstable, because he had just been reborn. But he, of course, did not even realize this, for him what was happening was a shock. In the beginning, he could not understand who he was, but after a moment, memories of the past began to fill his head. Aaaaaa! Suddenly he screamed painfully, clutching his head. As soon as this happened, the old man at the door finally pulled himself together and yelled at his subordinates. Why are the idiots up? Do not you see that he is in pain? Get to work. After his cry, he also rushed to the boy. The pain grew, and the memories poured into my head like an avalanche. The soul finally merged completely with the body and took its place. The almost dimmed light deep inside the body finally stopped darkening and assimilated in a new place. All this caused a new wave of pain throughout the body. Doctors did not hesitate and quickly injected the child with pain relievers and several other drugs. Now was a very important moment, they were trying to do everything in their power. At the same time, outside the door of the intensive care unit, there were several very worried people. They were all members of the Nara clan. Two of them were the most concerned. The dark-haired woman, hearing her son's cry, began to cry softly. The sadness that had accumulated before, finally broke free. A man with several scars on his face approached the woman and hugged her softly. Shikaku felt no less pain than his wife, his heart was breaking, but he could not afford to cry. He was scared, he was much more scared than his wife. Indeed, unlike her, he knew a lot more about what had happened. A long time ago, his father told him a story about his deceased brother. All the symptoms, everything that happened to Shikamaru now, it all matched perfectly. Their clan had been compiling a medical guide for years, but it was useless against this disease. Shikaku was terrified, dark and painful thoughts causing unbearable pain. But all he could do was hope for the best. But when he heard the cry of his son, for the first time ever, the man saw a ray of hope. Although it was a cry of pain, at least it was not dead silence. If his son can scream, that means there is still a chance. Yo Shino, don't cry, I'm sure everything will be okay, I'm sure. Calming his wife, Shikaku also calmed himself and drove away dark thoughts. At that moment, a large man ran into the hallway, with bright red hair and purple markings on his cheeks. He wore samurai armor and wore hakimaki instead of a protector on his head. Noticing Yoshino crying and Shikaku calming her down, Kaza did not interfere, approaching one of the Nara clan members, he quietly asked. How is baby Shikamaru? When asked by Akimichi, the man sighed languidly and replied. Young master, he. He just lost consciousness, and then, the head of the clan brought him here. Since then nothing has been known, but a minute ago. Turning to the white doors, the man said hopefully. The young master screamed for the first time, so it might not be so bad. Hearing these words, Kaza nodded glumly and walked to the wall. He didn't bother his friend and just waited. All he could now was just to support his friend with his presence.
Inoichi should have received the news by now, sighing inwardly, Kauza, like everyone else, began looking hopefully at the burning sign above the door of the intensive care unit. At the same time, in the intensive therapy unit, the uniform sound of the cardiograph was heard throughout the hall. Having stabilized the child's condition, the chief doctor exhaled wearily. His face was no longer as dark as before, even the corner of his lips was slightly raised, and his eyes expressed calmness. Now everything will be all right, his pain has stopped. The old man muttered with a smile. The nurse wiped the boy's forehead and asked in surprise. But her new son, he was dead, the old man nodded and continued. Everything was so, no doubt about it. In 40 years of practice, this is the first time I come across this. So if you want to ask what happened, then I have to disappoint you. Wiping his sweaty forehead, the old man grinned wryly. I don't understand a damn thing myself. But the boy survived, and this is the main thing. He needs some rest now, so move him to the room and watch him. Taking off his cap and gloves, the old man straightened his back and, already with his head raised, went to the exit. On the other side, those sitting outside the door suddenly got up and noticed the slowly sliding door. The red sign, with the inscription, Intensive Care Unit 3 suddenly went out, and immediately after that, the door swung open. A slightly bald old man with grey hair came out into the corridor. He was greeted by absolute silence and the looks of a dozen people. Getting ready to finally dispel the tension, the old man opened his mouth, but before he could say a word, another man ran into the corridor. It was blonde with green eyes. He was wearing the usual jown-in vest, over which a red sleeveless cloak was draped over it. Looking around, Inoichi immediately understood the situation and said with an apologetic smile. Excuse in a son, go on. The old man just grinned and waved his hand, and then began to speak. You can calm down, the boy is all right, his condition is stable and nothing threatens his life after these words, Yoshino began to cry again, and Shikaku himself began to cry. Kza patted Inoichu on the shoulder and said with a grin. You, as always, on time old man. Ha, okay. Exhaling with relief, Inoichi looked at Shikaku with a smile and walked over to the doctor. Er new san, since everything is fine with Shikamaru, can you tell me what happened to him? Everyone immediately looked at the doctor with interest, from which he only smiled wryly and said. I would be glad, but I'm afraid I myself have no idea what happened. At some point, we thought it was the end, but the boy suddenly came to life. Having told about everything in detail, the old man Ern Yu finally sighed with relief and left. Kza and Inoichi patted Shikaku encouragingly and left as well. The head of the clan himself sent off all the rank and file members and hugged his sleeping wife tighter. Yoshino fell asleep in his arms, but he did not dare to take her home. He knew it was probably useless and could cost him dearly. So he and his wife went to their son's ward and waited for tomorrow. The doctor said that tomorrow they can see their son. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. The next day came unnoticed. Shikaku dozed at his son's room and his wife slept sweetly on his shoulder. It was early morning, the sun barely rose to consecrate Konoha. The sun's rays swept over the Hokage's faces and peered into the hospital. There, in one of the rooms, lay a little dark-haired boy. The rays of the sun touched the child's face, from which he grimaced with displeasure and turned on the other side. But even there, he did not manage to hide. Ha! With a displeased snort, the boy raised his pillow and covered his head. But literally a second later, he jumped up in shock. 
Grimacing at the brightness of the sun, Shikamaru covered his face with his hand and narrowed his eyes around the office. Gradually accustomed to the light, he removed his hand, but immediately stopped. What the hell? Is that my hand? Not believing his eyes, he examined his other hand, then threw back the blanket and looked at his small legs, exhaled heavily. So I did not dream. Some memories immediately surfaced in my head, which made the guy painfully rubbed his temples. The memory of the past life was restored, but it was difficult for the body to get used to. Having made a couple of breaths, the guy relaxed and began to remember. Bright light. Yes, I detonated all the bombs. I should definitely be dead, at least my body. Looking again at his small hands, the guy began to understand what was happening. After I died, I remember that, opening his eyes in shock, the guy grimaced painfully and grabbed his head. Recent memories came back to consciousness. Finally, the full picture of events was restored, and he remembered everything. They were medical ninja, no doubt about it. Moreover, I have seen Fui in print. Of course, everything can be blamed on the illusion of an afterlife, so I'm not entirely sure. But the pain and sensations are real here. After looking around a little, the boy came to some conclusions. Everything is quite real, even if this is the afterlife, then everything is as real. The body is definitely not mine, so I died and then fell into this body. Into this world slowly leaving the bed, the boy was again amazed at the changes. Its growth was much less than in the past, more than twice. It was already clear that he was a child, but now it was clear that he was still very young. After examining himself, the guy muttered. Three or four years, although if this is a Shiner B world, then one cannot be sure. After examining the entire room, he became even more convinced of his correctness about his whereabouts. He just still had doubts about the reality of what was happening. Yet he died, and the painful recollection was very unpleasant. More recently, he was in the operating room, and now in the ward. It looks like the past I died or was close to death, more precisely, the past owner of this body. Judging by the faces of the doctors and their reactions, this is how it should be smiling a little sadly, the boy began to slowly approach the window. It was not difficult to get used to the body, but some of the sensations of the world have changed. Shikamaru felt the presence of something strange, some unusual power. Walking over to the window and taking a deep breath, Shikamaru held out with a smile. Chakra. The feeling is the most strange, but pleasant. It's hard to compare with something, but you can definitely get used to it. Taking a few breaths, the guy finally looked out the window and froze with a joyful face. Konoha. So this is what it is, hidden village in the foliage. From the window of the hospital, there was a good view of the whole village. Dozens of houses, many merchants' shops. Several cafes, hostels. At this time, there were not so many people walking the streets, but still there were plenty of them. Among them were Shinobi, someone went on a mission with a team, throwing a backpack over his shoulder, someone wandered alone. But they were all alike in one thing, each wearing a sheet protector. All these people were real ninjas, those who possessed chakra, those who could use the jutsu. Looking at all these people, the smile on little Shikamaru's face grew more and more. The world he dreamed of in the past, the world he was ready to enter with pleasure, he was right here, right in front of him. The legendary rock with the faces of the Hokage. Hashirama Senju, Tobirama Senju, Hairu Zen Sarutabi, Minotona Mikaz. The faces of all four were here. Not far from the faces of the Kij, the roof of the Hokage's residence was visible, and further, 
for sure, there should be a Shina Bee Academy. As a child, Shikamaru immediately had a desire to go there. The age was just right. But remembering his situation, he only grinned wryly. I was dreaming something. It would be tempting to become a Shina Bee, but first you need to understand your situation. If this is an illusion, then there is no point in thinking so. It's too real, so I'll just accept it and treat it as true. Was my past life a real illusion? Ha, huh, what's the difference now? Shikamaru continued to think about his situation. In any case, I don't believe this is an illusion. Everything looks like some kind of strange reincarnation in which I have preserved my memories. If so, then this is really amazing. Looking at the people walking down the street, Shikamaru mentally sighed. Not only do I don't know if I am capable of being a ninja at all, moreover, I don't know my own name. Now, although I am in a familiar world, but completely alone, without a name and surname. Who, like me, is fit for some experiment or for becoming the cannon fodder of the root? Shaking his head, Shikamaru brushed aside unnecessary thoughts. It may not be as bad as I think. Before drawing conclusions, it is worthwhile to understand your past. Unlike those reincarnations who receive the memories of the past owner of the body, I did not receive such a favor. So I'll figure it out. Fortunately, I know Japanese, another good acquisition from the past. Coupled with my knowledge of canon history, everything may not be so bad for me, but judging by only four faces on the rock, these are definitely times close to the beginning of the canon or the canon that has already begun, but before Tsunad's arrival. After standing still at the window, Shikamaru could not enjoy the view. Even if it was a seemingly simple village, he still could not believe what was happening. Although the guy was not a big fan of Naruto, he was a big fan of the Shina Bee world. The techniques, the chakra, the world itself and its laws were delightful. Even the story itself was not as interesting as this world. I wonder why exactly the world of Naruto, and how did I get reborn? Thinking about it, Shikamaru suddenly felt a little strange. A slight warmth passed through the body from which the guy involuntarily relaxed and sat down by the window. Hey, now I would like a cigarette. Unfortunately, such a desire at the moment was impracticable. World laws are defined. Hearing the cold, metallic voice, Shikamaru jumped up and scowled around. At the same moment, a series of quick messages followed. Complete merging with the fate of the master completed. Link to the law of fate confirmed. Development conditions confirmed. System adaptation. Hearing, and then seeing, the boy finally understood what was happening. That unemotional voice was in his head. Moreover, the messages that he voiced flashed before his eyes. He didn't understand their content much, but it didn't seem to be anything dangerous. Even if the voice is cold, the guy did not feel threatened by it. Shikamaru tensed when the last message appeared, announcing some system adaptation. He felt some kind of change, somewhere deep within himself, and this made him even more nervous. So this thing is inside me. Wait a minute, I already heard this G. Before he could finish his thought, Shikamaru suddenly began to stir up. He knew immediately that he was losing consciousness, so he quickly sat down and prepared for the inevitable. At the very last moment, before disconnecting, another message popped up. Full adaptation completed. The Shina Bee system has been activated. Seeing this message in front of his eyes, the boy closed his eyes with relief and completely passed out. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. At the same time, the nurse went to see the patients. When it was Shikamaru's turn, 
the girl noticed two people at the door of the room. Shikaku no longer slept, but just sat quietly, not disturbing his wife and son. Although he could enter the room, he did not dare to disturb Shikamaru. The doctor said that he needed peace, which made Shikaku unwilling to disturb him once again. When the nurse approached the man, she quietly said, Shikaku-san, you and Yoshino-san should rest. The man shook his head and smiled. You shouldn't. You, to Shikamaru. The girl nodded. Yes, you need to check his condition, a new san said that he can wake up at any moment, so you can be near, and not sit in the corridor. Yoshino twitched at the nurse's words, and then opened her eyes reddened with tears. Seeing the girl, she immediately asked. How is our son? We'll find out now, smiling, the nurse opened the door and entered the ward. Immediately, the smile faded from her face, after which she quickly walked towards Shikamaru. This action slightly startled Yoshino, from which she stood up and quickly followed the girl. Shikaku also kept up. Seeing the unconscious son sitting on the floor, the couple did not know what to think, while the nurse checked Shikamaru's condition. After checking everything, she exhaled with relief. It's all right, he's just sleeping. It looks like he's still too weak, so he fell asleep. Grasping the child with her arms, the girl carefully moved him to the bed and covered him with a blanket. Yoshino and Shikaku breathed out a sigh of relief and just at that moment, Shikamaru's hand twitched, and then he slowly began to open his eyes. Just about to get up, Shikamaru was stopped by the girl, and then he heard a sob. Son. The guy looked over the nurse's shoulder and widened his eyes in surprise. He saw too, a woman with tears in her eyes and a smiling man. But he was surprised not at their presence, but at their personalities. He vaguely recognized the woman, but the man was easy to recognize. It was definitely Shikaku Nara, the head of the Nara clan from the Hidden Leaf. Remembering what the woman said, the guy immediately understood everything. So I am their son. But their son Shikamaru. Realizing that he had been silent for too long, the boy smiled and greeted. Mom, Dad. How are you? Ha ha, how are we? You'd better worry about yourself, Shikaku replied with a grin. The man was finally able to breathe a sigh of relief and smile for the first time in recent years. Yoshino, hearing the words of her son, went up to him and hugged him tightly, whispered. Shikamaru, you scared us so. You scared us so much, I already thought that, what? The woman could not restrain herself and began to cry again. Shikamaru just smiled shyly and looked away from his father. He understood that he was not able to tell the truth. He knew that this would make it worse not only for him, but also for Shikamaru's parents. More precisely, now, to his parents. So, after all, Shikamaru, to this, Sean could only breathe inwardly. The last Shikamaru died and will not return, and his parents will not even know about it. This realization was a little unpleasant. Sean felt a slight shame, but at the same time, was completely powerless. What happened was not his fault. The only thing he could do was accept his situation. Now this is a new life, now his name is Shikamarunara. Just as he fully embraced his new life, a familiar voice rang through his head. Assignment, from scratch completed. Reward, 10,000 points of fate, the main scroll of Tijutsu, elixir of body strengthening. When this message came through, Shikamaru immediately understood its meaning. After his recent loss of consciousness, he developed some understanding of this Shina B system. All its main functions and advantages were now known to him. Of course, 
there was not much information, we can say that he received the most basic minimum on using this system. It was not possible to find out more. The system did not have intelligence, and could not provide answers to the questions of interest. Everything he needed to know, he had already received. For the rest, he needs to use the description of functions and objects, in the system itself, to replenish knowledge. But so far he could not be distracted by all this. Patting his mother on the head, Shikamaru tried to calm her down. Even Shikaku came over and began to help his son. Although Yoshino is usually domineering and strict, when something so serious happens, she immediately changes. Even Shikamaru was surprised, even though he vaguely remembered this woman, she was always rather cold. So this behavior was amazing. Mom's enough, they're looking at us Shikamaru asked, looking at the smiling nurse. Millimeter, okay. Embarrassed, the woman walked away and smiled sweetly. Hey, I haven't seen you like this Yoshino for a long time. Shikaku sighed. You mean I'm too callous? The woman asked coldly, looking sternly at her husband. Shikaku smiled nervously and shook his head. No, no, of course not. Approaching Shikamaru, the man patted his son on the shoulder and nodded. Well done Sonny. Shikamaru smiled and asked. Um. Father, what happened to me? This is. Shikaku stammered, and then shook his head. I don't know. I see. Well, I vaguely remember some moments. For example, ah. Uh, how old am I? Hearing the boy's question, the nurse wrote something down, and Shikaku sighed and replied. You are four years old, you turned a couple of months ago. What else don't you remember? The boy scratched his head and answered with a smile. Well, actually, it's easier to name what I remember, you, for example, and also my name, well. Pretending to think, after a couple of seconds, Shikamaru replied, I still remember a few people of the clan, our shadow techniques and the hockage. And baby Kji? Yoshino asked. Shikamaru frowned and nodded after a moment. Well, yes. I seem to remember, this is the guy who loves to eat. Yes, it's definitely him. Shikaku chuckled. When will I be discharged? Shikamaru asked, glancing at the nurse. The girl smiled and shook her head. I don't know that. Only a new son can decide. But, judging by your condition, if nothing unexpected happens, then this will happen no later than two weeks. Hearing the answer, Shikamaru exhaled inwardly. Two weeks isn't that long. Are you sure he can lie here longer? Yoshino asked worriedly. Looking at the woman with irritation, Shikamaru could only resign himself. Although he wanted to point out her place, he remembered his own in time. Still she cares about me. And who am I to mind a knin? Shaking his head, Shikamaru noticed his father's surprised look. Looks like he noticed this little change in his son in just a moment. As an experienced shinobi, as well as an advisor to the hawkage, he learned to understand people, even by looking. Now, his son's gaze was domineering, annoyed and displeased. Everything would be fine, but this is definitely not the look of a child. Maybe it just seemed to me, but although Shikaku saw this cold look, he did not attach any importance to it for long. At the same time, turning his head to the window, Shikamaru internally drew conclusions. He, like Shikaku, has learned over the years of his life to determine the intentions of others, only by looking. In a world full of criminals, a skill like this is essential. I was careless, he definitely noticed, no wonder, he is an experienced shinobi, and even from the Nara clan. 
Fortunately, he is my father, and I am only four years old. I'm just a child he hasn't known for so long. My changes can be attributed to a lot. In any case, it is worth keeping yourself in hand. The days when I could not tolerate objections and could cause problems in a fit of anger are over. At least until. Turning his head again and calmly looking at his parents, Shikamaru continued to behave like a child. Shikaku shook his head once again and dismissed the useless thoughts. It was his son Shikamaru, even if he had changed a little, it was still him, Shikaku was sure of it. For the next hour, Shikamaru talked to his parents, and later they left. Although they could have stayed longer, their son referred to fatigue and wanted to rest. They had no choice and they left him. Finally alone and finished with his hospital breakfast, Shikamaru put down the tray of dishes, and taking a deep breath, said inwardly. Status. At the same moment, after his command, an illusory window appeared in front of the young man's eyes, which only he could see. Name, Shikamarunara. Age, four years. Faction, Nara clan, Hidden Leaf Village. Ninja rank, none. Strength, eight, stamina, nine, speed, seven. Talent, twelve, chakra size, thirty, chakra control, ten. Pedigree. Nara, strength 32%, improved mastery of the element yin, 6%. Improved genome, absent. Elements. Earth release 25%. Fire release 6%. Yin release 36%. Technique, none. Home, so this is what it looks like, interesting. You didn't have to ask about your age. The status is rather short and understandable Shikamaru already knew the main commands of the system and what this or that statistic was responsible for. Name, affiliation, age and rank, spoke for themselves. As for, strength, defense and speed, then everything was more complicated. Strength reflected the user's physical ability. First of all, it is, of course, muscle strength. For Shina B practitioners of Tijutsu, this is one of the most important skills, along with stamina and speed. Endurance is primarily responsible for the body's endurance to various kinds of stress and their long-term performance. Also, endurance is responsible for the recovery of the body from all sorts of injuries and overvoltage. Speed, of course, is responsible for the Shina B's speed, how fast he moves how fast his instincts work. All three of these indicators are the foundation of any Shina bee. But not all of them focus their attention on these indicators. More often than not, Tijutsu Shina bee persistently develop these characteristics. The same ninja who practice other areas of Jutsu, although they develop these characteristics, are not so stubborn, unlike the Tijutsu masters. Unlike the first three characteristics and the last two, talent was a kind of general indicator that influenced all the others. Talent. Although it can be important in developing strength, speed and endurance, usually practitioners of these three main areas can do without it. Of course, someone with talent will grow noticeably faster. But sometimes hard training can help you surpass any talent. But, this does not apply to the control and volume of the chakra. If you are a control genius, or a genius with huge reserves of chakra, a bright future awaits you. Of course, a Shina bee can develop control, and increase volume. But people predisposed to this, such as Senju or Uzumaki, have much more advantages. It will be almost impossible to catch up with them using only hard work. Of course, huge volume and control is not the most important thing. The volume of chakra, first of all, affects its quantity. But also, in the characteristic, 
something additional can be taken into account, for example, a Baiju. Chakra control is, of course, responsible for knowing how to use your chakra correctly. This is one of the main characteristics that a Shinobi who does not have large chakra volumes must develop. The ability to control chakra helps in its correct distribution and maintenance. The better the control, the more the Shinobi will retain chakra after using the technique. More chakra means more strength to fight. This is the main benefit of control, but there are of course others. As for talent, this characteristic affects all the others. The more talent, the faster other indicators will grow. The more talent and a certain indicator, the more chances you have to master the technique. The ability to learn most of the techniques quickly depends on talent. The higher the talent, the greater the success. Of course, it is worth considering compatibility with elements and much more. As for the elements section, everything is simple. It reflected the compatibility of Shikamaru with a certain element and the ability to transform chakra into this element. The greater the percentage of compatibility, the stronger the technique of a certain element and the better the transformation into this element. The next section is techniques. It, as the name implies, reflected all the techniques Shikamaru learned. From the information received, Shikamaru knew that all Jutsu would have a place in this section. Ninjutsu, in the Ninjutsu list, and Genjutsu, in the corresponding Genjutsu list. Well, and of course they will be divided into elements. One of the most important and more interesting sections to Shikamaru was, of course, the pedigree section. Already knowing some of the system's functions, Shikamaru was really interested in bloodlines. Pedigree Nura, strength 32%, improved mastery of the element Yin, 6%. Improved genome, absent. As a direct descendant of the head of the Nura clan, Shikamaru naturally inherited his family's bloodline. Pedigree primarily depended not on its purity, but on its strength, which can also be increased. Many ninja were able to surpass their ancestors, but at the same time, their pedigree was more diluted, but this did not prevent them from becoming stronger than past generations. Of course, the purity of the pedigree was also an important factor. If a clan has an improved genome of some kind, it certainly has a better chance of awakening in those whose bloodline is purer. In the Shina B system, more attention was paid to the power of the bloodline, since often purity did not play a special role. The explanation for this was very simple. Purity had a limit, and strength, it was completely absent. So, for example, it is impossible to surpass the purity of the ancestor of the clan, no matter how hard you try, but it is quite possible to make the bloodline stronger. Bloodline alone, even if pure, does not mean that Shina B with this blood will be strong. But if a ninja has a more diluted lineage than his ancestors, he can make his lineage many times stronger in his own body than even his ancestors had. The Shina B system displayed the strength of the pedigree, the improved pedigree genome, if any, and the superiority of the pedigree. Many clans, over the years of training and development in a certain style, changed their genes, and this in turn was passed on to the offspring. So, for example, the Nara clan had an increased mastery of the yin element. Clan Akimichi has yang and the ability to process its calories into chakra. Other clans also had their advantages, and some even had improved genomes. Shikamaru was really interested in the pedigree section as status was not the only advantage of the system. Another important function was exchange. Sighing with anticipation, Shikamaru smiled and said to himself. Exchange. Three sections appeared immediately before it. Bloodlines and genomes, techniques, pills and elixirs. 
If I understood correctly, then I am able to exchange some fate points for pedigrees. If so, then this system is amazing. Shikamaru concentrated on selecting the pedigrees and genomes section, after which a rather long list appeared in front of him. Pedigrees and genomes. R and G, Achaiha, strength 50% share in Gan improved mastery of the element of fire, 10%. 50,000 points of fate. RNG, Hyuga, 50% strength Bakugan strengthening the body. 40,000 points of fate. R, Akimichi, strength 50% improved mastery of the element Yang, 10%. 5,000 fate points. R, Inuzuka, power 50% improvements of all senses. 5,000 fate points. R and G, Kaguya, 50% strength Shikatsum Yaku strength and the skeleton. 20,000 points of fate. D, Boiling Release. 10,000 points of fate. D, Heat Release. 10,000 points of fate. R, Uzumaki, Power 50% improvements in control and chakra volume. Improving vitality and disposition to Fu in Jutsu. 20,000 points of fate. D. Dragon Veins. 10,000 points of fate. Wow, I haven't even heard of some of them. A huge list of dozens of different genomes and lineages appeared before Shikamaru's eyes. Prices also varied, and sometimes the genomes went right along with the pedigrees but there were also times when they could be bought separately. For example, the Senju clan's bloodline could be acquired with or without the improved wood release genome, simply by improving the body and granting some benefits. Sorry, just the pedigree of this clan, along with the genome, was worth more than everyone else. With 10,000 glasses now in hand, Shikamaru could well have bought a couple of weak bloodlines or even a unique element. The problem was that all the elements, one way or another, depended on five main ones. The stronger the main elements, the stronger the combined element of the genome. Therefore, Shikamaru did not want to spend points on them. Indeed, with his current pedigree and skills, there simply will be no sense from the new element. What is the use of a child, from the elements of heat or magnetism? Many owners of the Nara clan do not have much chakra, although they have developed control that surpasses ordinary Shinobi. As for the other bloodlines, there were options for 10,000, but they weren't particularly useful. In the situation of a simple four-year-old with 10,000 points, Shikamaru could not waste them mindlessly. Hope you like the video. Like share and subscribe the channel also make sure. You tell me your recommendation in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.